Building the movement of resistance to oil. Voices from Western Uganda. The Great Lakes that link Uganda and DRC are home to some of the most diverse wildlife on the planet, as well as diverse cultures and people. They also contain oil and gas deposits that many companies want to exploit. Local communities are concerned about how the oil industry will affect their lives. After visiting host communities in Nigeria, Ecuador, and the United States, leaders from Uganda and the DRC visited Lake Albert and Lake Edward to learn from local people about their experiences and concerns with the oil industry. I'm called Kambas Kachuva Mukura Josue. I'm a fisherman in Vichumbi, Congo. My name is Diana Nabiruma. I'm from Kampala. Nicholas Kagonga, my name. We've been traveling different parts of the country. So far, I've learned a lot of things. Uh, in Bunyoro, we've found a number of developments which are taking place, mostly road construction, oil facilities being put up or erected within these communities. On the Ugandan shores of Lake Edward, proposed oil is raising concern. Nicholas, Diana and Josue met locals that fear drilling will disrupt ecosystems and undermine livelihoods. We are here in Katwe, and the population largely depends on the fishery resources, and it is even water for my family use. How many people do you think, men, women, children, depend on this lake, on the entire stretch of Lake Edward on the Ugandan side? We may be more than 60,000 riparian communities. Those are entirely, entirely depending on fishing for their livelihood. They have no any option of livelihood, no economic activity apart from fishing. The ecosystem has always remained intact because the community, the beneficiaries, understands the impact of nature conservation. We hear that this lake is part of the oil exploration site point. We have two weeks when Chinese have come in Kato here. They are busy planting their machines in different uh, areas in Kato here, both on the shores and the greater lakes. So what are the impacts you're expecting on the lake if this activity takes place? Our fear is that the ecosystem in the lake it will no more exist. Because once where expression starts within the lake basin, there are machines planted there. They plant their machines forcefully. Those machines to enter at earth crust down, it's a force. They have to force it there by exploiting those parts where the machines will be planted. So the explosion has a very big vibration, which is death caused to the ecosystem, both fish and all the fisheries resources within the lake. When it comes to water, the drilling process is, needs much water. Our water levels will reduce. The sunshine will heat the water. The oxygen saturation will reduce in the water, and then fish will start dying. When people hear of that oil question and consider those people on Lake Albert who were evicted from their own home areas, they have that very big fear. That's why their eyes are so, so much fearful whenever they see a white person. I've seen people on TV, on televisions, who are in oil exploration areas in Africa here. They've never had peace, no environment, conservation. We hear cries, we hear cries and curses. They may come here, carry out to oil exploration. After 20 years, when their mission is over, they will go and leave the natives to suffer the consequences. To learn more about these concerns, Josue, Nicholas, and Diana traveled north near Lake Albert, just outside Murchison Falls National Park, where the Tolenga Oil Project is underway. Here, the Ugandan government has seized the land of local people for the French oil company Total offering without getting consent or giving full information. 
Promises of jobs and fair compensation have not been fulfilled. So from what I've gathered, oil brought in powerful people. Yes. The existence of two oil wells on the land that your clan owns. Uh, they told people that this land is going to be taken by the government for central processing facility. When this uh, first oil was drilled, uh, Kahwa came and uh, he wanted to buy the oil well. To me as a chairman, I told him, me, currently I'm not the owner of that oil well. That no, you put a stamp that I have, you have bought the thing, uh, I will give you money. I told him, me, I'm poor, I'm used to digging, I'm used to fishing. So the money you are giving me might be a curse to me, might even kill me. So I'm not ready what? to receive it. Then he went to the next village. They made agreements there. The chairman stamped that he bought what? Yes. These false documents were used to seize valuable land and criminalize those who resisted. My five brothers were arrested, taken to police cells. Several people whom we had grabbed their oil wells, about five. Up to now, they are battling with them in high court. How has oil changed your life? the life of your family, such as your wife or wives, and that of your children. People are taking it as to be oil to be as a curse and not a blessing. The uh, standard of living of people has not improved. The young men, they feel they are now jobless and uh, they are, cannot benefit anything from the oil companies. They are bringing people from Fua, people from Kampala, people from uh, somewhere to come and do exact jobs that would have been done by the people from Belisa. Ugandans also fear the ways that oil is jeopardizing cultural and sacred sites. Diana, Nicholas, and Josue met with a custodian of a sacred site who worries that the government is protecting oil instead of its own people and culture. Chagore Margaret is my name. I stay in this community. The place is called Kisansia West, Kisansia Paris, Bolisa District, and Kidwara Sub County at large. Tell me more about what are the duties of the custodian. Custodians of sacred natural sites perform rituals like those ancestors, how they were doing it. Maybe people are sick at home the breakout of any disease, and even to protect the environment. But now things are changing. More people are coming, and you see now things are changing. They can go and cut trees, they cut bushes, they want to burn charcoal. And now the worst one is oil now. Oil has also been discovered in our area. These people, they don't respect culture. They come from maybe America, France, China, where I don't know. They just come in this place. We don't have rights on our land, even on our sacred natural sites. If you say this is my sacred natural site, don't, don't pass here. They say no. Sacred natural site is what? This one can, can be compensated and you go. For us, we know that such thing, you cannot compensate it. It is the natural thing you found there. We are still trying to show them the importance of these sites. If they destroy our sites, that one, it is like destroying the hospital. So we are expecting more changes and we're expecting more diseases and we're expecting more deaths even. Even separating people at their families. Because when they come and compensate you, that you go away. This one will go to, to Ethiopia, mm. this one will go to Kampala, this one now we are, the family has gone. Mm. When will you meet yes. now? What would be the response of the government towards that? The government should come up and even defend us also. But the government is not defending us. They are only defending those who are coming. They are defending oil. They are not defending about our culture. Uh, 
As they traveled Uganda, Diana, Nicholas, and Josue met even more people who were being forced from their land and losing their livelihoods to oil development. Near Hoima, residents are losing their land and homes to make way for road construction and an airport to serve the East Africa crude pipeline. Locals do not feel they have been adequately compensated or that their concerns are taken seriously. I am a father of 17. Mm. I have lived here for 20 years. Mm. I have put my trees and I'm planning for my pension because I am now clocking to 60. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2018, we heard that the government was constructing a road leading to the airport and uh, that surveyors were to come to this place to survey where the road was to pass. They passed through my land, and my land is approximately uh, 2.5 acres that is to be taken away. This is a corner now. This is a corner because the road passes here like this and now faces the other side. I feel living in the corner would also put my, put my children and livestock at risk. How you feel about a road destroying mm. the energy and the love that you put into mm. your trees? I feel my environment is affected. I feel my hope is affected. I now feel hopeless. I feel hopeless. The levels of compensation, especially on land and crop, is so poor. Uh, we have seen very many people who are compensated out of their land now being beggars people who don't have what to put on, people who don't have food. When the surveyors were surveying through this land, through the yard, actually, some of my children were here with their mom. Whenever they could press a peg into the land, some of them would share a tear, and I would feel as if the peg was being pegged into my heart. If you were given an opportunity mm. to give uh, government, oil companies, and even international financing institutions, mm. what message would you give them? We don't reject development. We don't fight the government. But let the governments of Africa and the whole world not by generalize the poor. But to me, as as Jorom Basima, to me I don't call it development. Uh, if one is able to have food, to have shrubs, herbs for treatment, if one can move barefooted, to me I think that is development. Love and the care for nature is everybody's responsibility. To wrap up their trip, Josue, Nicholas, and Diana visited Murchison Falls National Park, one of the most iconic protected areas in the Pearl of Africa, where tourism adds a huge boost to Uganda's economy. Inside the boundaries of the park, oil exploration by Total and road construction by Chinese Communications Construction Company threaten to destroy important tourism sites and irreplaceable animal habitats. Locals wonder if this is the beginning of the end for this national park. I've learned a lot here in Uganda. When the oil men come here, it isn't because they want to develop our environments. They just want to take the money and go and develop their homeland, not here. I'm going to tell the people to be very committed in preserving nature, protecting the environment, protecting water, which is the source of our life. Oil is not a resource which is renewable. They will extract it after like 20 years, it will be finished. 
but they cannot bring back the land. They cannot bring back what they have destroyed. Like the wells, the water bodies where we get the fish. I realize that we still have so much more to do to raise awareness. We are borrowing a lot and investing in a sector that is going to be detrimental to agriculture, which is the predominant economic activity in Uganda, a sector that is detrimental to tourism, which is one of the biggest uh, earners for the country. And I'm worried, we'll be, will we be able to pay it back? And based on previous experiences, I doubt that we will. The only thing to do now is to mobilize the community. A community uh, lacking information, it is easy to penetrate it. But a community which is informed, it is not easy to penetrate it.